Well, hello, friends, neighbors. John, your whiskey neighbor here, and welcome down to the basement. Uh, it is cold and wet and rainy today, and I thought, well, I could go full peat, or maybe I go full bourbon. So today, we're going to talk uh, barrel strength bourbon with you. Uh, I haven't reviewed this with the channel, and uh, I, I better get to it before the bottle disappears. You know, this is bullet bourbon, but uh, they're barrel strength. It's batch number six. Tell you a little bit more about it. Don't know enough uh, when we get back, but uh, if you've got any bourbon, you've got any barrel or cast strength bourbon, when you pour some of that, and when we get back, we'll sip together and we'll talk bullet barrel strength bourbon. Three, four. Thanks for staying with me. I, um, as I said, you know, I haven't talked to you guys about this uh, bullet barrel strength bourbon, uh, but it's uh, it's an interesting relationship that I have or the whiskey community has with uh, bullet. You know, bullet's been sourcing their stuff for a long time. They do have their own distillery. Uh, this isn't age stamp, but I think this is still sourced. Still. A lot of people out there, a lot of craft distilleries, they're not craft, they're a big, big brand, um, you know, are sourcing their whiskey, and and I'm okay as long as the whiskey tastes good. Um, I do wish that they totally um, would be very transparent about their sourcing, uh, but this, you know, it's 58.3% uh, barrel strength, as I said, and I know, you know, they empty, this isn't single barrel, they empty a number of barrels, uh, but as they advertise on their website, it's still like they don't cut it with water and chill filter or anything like that, of course. Uh, it's just uh, whatever strength that comes out after they dump the barrels that they want in it, um, that's it. And they do it in batches. So this is batch six at 58 and a bit, I think. Let's see what it is on the nose. Solid bourbon, little spicy, some caramel. Mmm, rich cinnamon, uh, darker cinnamon, so maybe some other baking spices. I like it. Perks the nose a little bit, a little prickly, a little, uh, not pickly, that's too strong, but there's a little bit of uh, rye herb in there. Yeah, nothing wrong with that nose. It's strong, it's uh, a little alcoholic. Sweet, but a high sweetness doesn't in my for me have a real thick buttered or thick caramel nose it's more kind of spicy and like i said a little grassy uh and then um some vanillas it's it's good but it's not a thick rich cooked nose let's try it on the palate cheers Nice peppery. It's got, of course, heat from alcohol, but it's also um, got a little bite from the liquid. I think it's a higher rye mash bill. I think they say that on their site. Otherwise, I'm like, I don't even know the mash bill behind the barrels they choose. But tastes higher rye, nice, sweet, light toffee. There, I still get that little bit of grassy rye in this one. Interesting. Could be, could come off a little bit almost minty or, um, yeah. Uh, still more cinnamon nutmeg, not um, not too cooked, not too buttery, but pretty good. I like it, and I like it right at 58, so I'm okay with that. Uh, is this a must-buy? You know, it's a challenge because, oh, I should rate it. I enjoy this. I do. Uh, I think it avoids some pitfalls that I find in, in some bourbons. By that, I mean it doesn't have a lot of bitterness. There's a little bit of oaky i mean there should be good oak in here and there is and that oak can edge into bitterness a little bit it's not sour um it's not overly peppery it's not cracked pepper like when i say spicy it's like a hot cinnamon spicy um i like it i like it a fair amount of course i'm kind of a sucker for barrel proof bourbon so you know but it pushes i know it's source but it pushes at that four stars just under three and three quarters let's say uh, the challenge for me is that it's priced pretty high for what it delivers. 
I like it. It's tasty stuff. Like, I really do like it. I'm going to go back to four stars and another little sip. Mm. Yeah, that's just that's just good stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, it's sourced, but I, I think their blender. Oh, what is her name? I'm going to blank, but uh, knows what they're doing and uh, and puts out some pretty good bourbon. Well, I couldn't really sit down and talk barrel strength uh, bourbon with you guys and not quickly pour a little bit of uh, single barrel uh, Knob Creek. Now, this is a single barrel, so of course it varies, but it is, you know, nine years on it. It says right there, 120 proof, 60%. Um, this is a standard for me in terms of that kind of barrel cast strength, 60% ABV, uh, and it is significantly less money. Let's try it on the nose. Oh, in the past, I would have said, oh, we're going to get some, some sweetness here. I usually get a lot of that sugar on Knob Creek, but. Huh. Maybe the bottle's been open too long. Is that a thing? In this comparison, the nose on Knob Creek brings in a little deeper oak and a little uh, red apple or dark cherry. Not overly, but just a little bit. But the nose in this comparison is quite a bit more relaxed. Quite a bit more relaxed. Wow. All right. Let's try it on the palate. Cheers. There it is. Nose wasn't getting me here, but I'm liking that uh, Jim Beam profile. It's got not an over amount of nut for me. I know it's there. It's absolutely there. It's Jim Beam. But... It is um, a little spicier, a little more cracked pepper, rich spices. It's got more length, a little butter, a little coating, a little uh, smoothed out crack caramel. Another sip. Mm. Okay, so solid four stars. This is probably there too. My preference, this nod to Knob Creek. No surprise if you're a long-term viewer of the channel. I have continued to discover that while I'm getting okay picking apart a whiskey, it's pretty clear I have some, some biases and some preferences that come out when I'm tasting. These are great, strong bourbons. They would make, you know, um, excellent cocktails, uh, pretty boozy cocktails to be honest, but they would perk and spice up whatever you add them to. They can be sipped neat. You know what, I'll do a quick hit of water uh, and then just come back with my final thoughts. Okay, added some water, let them sit. Ah, this is now uh, a lighter, very nice, honey, spicy graham crackers. Let's try the Knob Creek. Let's push more into oak and fruit. More of what I was getting up front, but easier to nose. Both of them relaxed with water. The bullet with a bit of water, you know, with water in this one, it actually is pushed into a little bit of a two-dimensional bourbon. It now, uh, I said it was on that edge of, of bitter and it's got a little bit of bitter. It's definitely got some spice. I feel that's a higher rye. Um, and it's got some sweetness to it, but the sweetness is less rich. I actually don't like that very much with water. Knob Creek with water. Pulled out a few more layers on that one. Almost got a little bit of black licorice, which is interesting. Um, richer spices, richer palate. Also, the oak goes a little bitter for me with water. Interesting. They both have quite an oak presence. I know I didn't run to that at, up front. I probably should have. Very nice, very nice bourbons. This one, um, I like a little more with water uh, and the cracked pepper. Now in the longer finish, really nice. Uh, the bullet, I mean, of course, water to where you need it to be in terms of what you're looking for. Um, but I'd rather take really, really tiny sips almost at full strength here because the water seems to kind of thin it out. Very interesting. These are both great barrel strength bourbons. They really are. My challenge on Bullet in my market is that it's priced pretty high. Almost half the price uh, I can get uh, this Knob Creek. And at half the price, I'm always going to be buying this. So this was a nice treat. 
but it's going to be quite a while before I pick up whatever batch they're on right now. Whereas this Knob Creek, you know, nine years old, 60% and just a steal in my market. I keep going back to this bottle. Anyways, thanks for joining me. I apologize for the echo and the bad sound and the bad light. And why is there a Jameson flag behind me? Well, because I haven't been able to rebuild my nook yet. Uh, and when the weather is terrible, and it is right now, I can't shoot outside. And so it's like I'm wandering around my house going, where can I set up? I appreciate you guys dropping in anyways. It's really about the whiskey, I hope, and not about how flashy whatever it is behind me. Thank you for joining me. And uh, hopefully I'll get a chance. Do I have, I think I have like one, one or two samples left. So hopefully I can do something for you guys on Sunday. Take care.